Okay, so welcome everybody to Engaging Online Learners with Padlet. My name is Monica Espinosa and I uh, represent Torrance Adult School over in Torrance, California in the South Bay. So I am a certified Google Educator Level 1. I recommend that you look into it. It has really taught me uh, lots of skills with Google and it has motivated me to use Google products in my in my instruction. Uh, so today it's not a Google product, but it is very engaging and very interesting as well. So my at my email address is down below if you wish to contact me uh, for any questions. All right. So for today, for today, the the goal for us is I would like for participants to learn practical ways to use Padlet to encourage engagement, engagement in a distance learning, distance learning setting. Maybe some of you have already used Padlet in the classroom. Uh, I have used Padlet in my classroom, in my face-to-face, -face, and it worked well. And it seems to be working well so far with my distance learners who are at a, an advanced level and who are at a, a high beginning to intermediate level. All right, so today, the first thing we're going to do is you are going to play the role of the student. Uh, and secondly, then you are going to be the teacher. And I would, I would, I'm going to speak about why you should consider using Padlet. And if time allows, we are going to create and share. I hope that you already had a moment to create a Padlet account. If you haven't, please don't do it now. It will not be necessary right now. So if you have not, please do not do it right now. Just focus. All right, moving on. So your first example as a student. Okay, so Padlets are shared are shared with our students and they could be shared in a variety of, of ways. So the first one that I'm going to share with you is I'm going to give you a link, okay? Uh, you can either send them a direct link or you can create a hyperlink. Uh, for example, a hyperlink is when you have text or, a pic or an image and you can right click and add a hyperlink to it. So if a student clicks on, on, this, on this text or that image, it will take them directly to your Padlet. Uh, you can share this with students on any kind of platform or through email. I choose to put it to hyperlink text on my website. Do they need an account to create posts? No, they do not. Uh, should I include my name if I am the student? I do ask my students to, to uh, type in their name just so that I can keep track of who is participating. If students are signed in, if they do create accounts, their names will appear. You have the option of toggling uh, that you can either require that your Padlet require a name or not. And how do you post? So you're going to look around the page for these plus symbols, these dots. Sometimes uh, when you hover over these plus signs, it might turn into a pencil, a pencil. So uh, you're going to look for those. And can I make changes to, uh, to my post? Yes, you can, but you have to be signed in, okay? Or the teacher or the owner of the Padlet can, can make those changes. All right, so the first example that I would like for us to participate uh, in is a map. So Melinda is going to, to post a link to a fir our first Padlet, and it is a Padlet of a map. If you could please uh, read the instructions at the top, and your first Padlet is, will look like this, okay? And for this, I have written the instructions at the top, and I would like for you to create a post telling me where, 
where your favorite food comes from. And I would like for you to tell us what that food is. So for example, in this plus sign, I typed, I looked for Japan. I looked for Japan because my favorite food is sushi. There you go, all right, so Thai, mango, mango, just, okay, got it. Oh, mango and sticky rice. Japan, that's me. France, Italy, baguettes, yes. Germany, okay. Italy, artichokes, Mexico, okay. If you see on my map, it has, it has kind of uh, uh, condensed all the responses from Mexico. So I have five responses here. Okay, okay. there you go. Okay, why can't I see? Brazil, okay, they are typing. Okay. If you are having, if you're having trouble uh, finding where, where to post, look around, look around your page for a plus sign. A plus sign or a pencil should be in the dot. And once, once that opens up, you can type the name of the country or the name of the city. Wow, this is looking beautiful. Yay. Okay, awesome. I love it, kebab, delicious. Okay, so I have I have used a map in my distance learning class. Uh, so normally when we're you know face to face, we can talk to students and we can ask them where they are from, and everybody can get to know each other, and it's a very diverse and rich environment. The distance learning uh, doesn't allow us to do that as as it would in a face-to-face -face class. So one thing that I have done, at the, what I did at the beginning of my, of my distance learning class was I gave them a Padlet like this and I asked them to, to you know, tell us where they are from and I, to write a brief description of themselves, I'm sorry, of what they, of what they enjoy. And so now everybody can view uh, that we have students from Korea, we have students from uh, from Morocco, from Indonesia. So that was that's very nice for for them to see uh, where different people come from. All right, so I hope I hope that you you liked this this map. And again, you could use it for multiple purposes. Just make sure you you give the instructions in the description. In Monica. The description. Yes. Monica, sorry, this is Anthony. So while right. we're looking at while we're looking at the Padlet right now in the Zoom screen, could you mm -hmm. show us by adding another entry? Um, some yeah. people were having some trouble. Maybe you can just give us an example. Yes. So once again, on the top right, on the top right, um, and just I ask you to look around for it because depending on your Padlet it might be in a different area. So I am on the top right of my page and I will, once this uh, window opens up, I will search for something, I'm sorry, for the name of a country or, or a city, right? So I'm going to type, what can I type now? Let's see, Spain, okay, Spain. So I will, once all of the options for Spain pop up, I can select, I can select one and tell me if I need to repeat this process. So I will select Spain and then the post window will open up and I can say, I love, what do I love? I love paella. Paella. Paella, okay, yes. I, that's one of the many things that I that I love. So then, uh, if I wanted to, if I wanted to, I could post, add some, uh, upload a picture, uh, a picture, audio file, um, video. 
So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get complicated, but I will show you how to add a picture. Uh, if I go to Google Images, I can search for, let's say, uh, a, okay, sorry. There you go. So I'll click it and that's it. And to finalize my post, I can just click anywhere outside of that box and that's it. All right. So if there are no other questions regarding how to post on this Padlet, I will move on. Is it safe to continue? Okay. So let's go with student example number two. Number two. Okay, so this one, I am going to share it with you in a different way. I'd like to show you in our examples, I want to show you, I want to share it with you all different ways so that you could see uh, how, how easy, how difficult it might be for your students to access and what would work for you. So this one, I am going to share a bit.ly. And a bit.ly is a shortened URL, and I made this shortened URL with, with the program with bit.ly. Um, it's a free account, and you could go on there, and, sorry, I'm trying to show you, right here. And what you would do is you would copy the long, the long, um, sorry. There you go. I would paste the long URL and then I can customize, I can customize my URL that I want to share. Um, sorry about that. Okay. So I posted, I shared this bit.ly, I shared this bit.ly with students on, on um, my web page. Okay. Um, but if you want to send it via text or however you would like to share this link, it is just a link. All right, so the bit.ly for this is bit.ly forward slash teacher students. One thing to remember about, about uh, a bit.ly URL is that students have to type it in exactly as it is, exactly, exactly as it is, and they must type it into the address bar. This is a link to my page. Bit.ly is it doesn't exist. It's not a web page, so sometimes it's uh, a little difficult for students because they type in bit space. Uh, so you just they just have to practice with that. So uh, Anthony, if you would like to go ahead and and send the link for the second example that they will be participating in. So Monica, um, yes. we, po we posted the link in the chat and I think um, we just want to clarify for people because I think some people are having a little bit of confusion. So when you click on this link, it's going to take you outside of Zoom. So Correct. you're going to have to, if you have a browser open like Chrome, um, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, whatever you have open, that's where you're going to find uh, Monica's Padlet, and then you can work um, on Monica's Padlet on, in your browser. You shouldn't be clicking the plus sign in your Zoom window. Nothing mm. is going to happen if you do that. You have to go work off uh, in, the, um, in the whatever browser has opened for you with Monica's Padlet. I'm done, Monica. Okay, got it. So if if it has been shared, let me just take a look at it. Okay, got it. So lots of people have already have already posted. And I see I see names. So I imagine that the people whose names I see that they are currently signed in to their to their Padlet account, um, which is great. Thank you. But if you want if you are signed in and you want to remain anonymous, there is an option for that as well. Okay, got it. So this is an example of, uh, of a different activity that you could do, um, asking questions, for example. I, this, I wanted to make this really short, but some, how, how I have used it is I create 
four columns and each column maybe has a different question. For example, one requires a response in the present tense, one requires a response in the past tense, in the future tense, or if you're asking them to use vocabulary. Um, so again, uh, many different questions or situations that you could pose for them uh, to elicit whatever response you would like, whether it's grammar or once again, or media. You want videos or audio. Okay, what's your favorite color? Green, blue, blue, burgundy, oh, okay. Beach or mountain, both. Beach, mountain, both. Chocolate, chocolate, dark chocolate, yes. No vanilla, no vanilla, okay. Sadly, no vanilla. Yeah, chocolate is the best, I believe. Okay. Do you have a pet? Yes, two cats. Are your cats with you right now? All right, wonderful. Okay, so there you go. That is another example of, of a Padlet that, of a Padlet format that you could use. So far, I have shown you a map and I have shown you what they call a shelf. Um, when you are creating your Padlet, you have the option of selecting whatever format they have. And I will show you that later on. Okay. Anthony, are we okay on questions? Um, I think so. We just, okay. to, um, just maybe one thing. So just to point out again, um, what Monica has been saying that when you come into different Padlets, the plus sign is going to change, right? In this case, in the second Padlet, the plus sign was actually down at the bottom and it was a different, yeah. I saw a different color. It was a, like a white color. Oh, you okay, just have yeah. to remember, yeah, that this, you're always looking for the plus sign, but it's mm -hmm. not always going to be in the same place or the same color. So just so, yes. you know, that's why you have to search around a little bit. Exactly. And Anthony, uh, so I have worked with my students on using Padlet. So it's taken, it's taken a little bit of getting that message across. Uh, but one thing that I do when I post the assignment, Anthony, is, for example, you know, the first Padlet, it was pink and it was at the top. And then in the second Padlet, it was, it was right below the, the column. Uh, so what I do is I take a screenshot, I'm sorry, not a screenshot, I do a little snippet of what it's going to look like. So in the first example I showed you, uh, these two pictures of what it might look like. So maybe as your students are getting used to using this platform, uh, you can have little pictures of what it's going to look like for them in that specific Padlet. And okay. Monica, yes. sorry, yeah. can you, um, a, some people are still asking about the anonymous again, how, how mm -hmm. we, how they can um, change to the anonymous or do whatever. Okay. Do. So the easiest way, um, the easiest way is just to sign out. Okay. If you are, if you are signed in, just sign out and uh, let me, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can get to that. So I can show you on my screen. So just Give me one second. I will pause. I'm on my teacher account, so I I don't think I can I can do that. Uh, I think you answered it though. Okay. If you're signed in, then your name appears. And if you're yeah. not signed into Padlet, then you are anonymous. Um, do students need to be signed in in order to use the Padlet? No. No, they, no, they don't. Exactly. <laughs> so. it's, right. And um, what was I going to say to that, Melinda? Uh, so again, for, uh, you know, if you do want to know, if you want to track uh, responses, then you, you can ask them to write their name in the post. 
And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm not asking students to create an account because we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, it's a lot of technology coming their way and my way. So right now, I'm not requiring, to, requiring them to create an account, uh, just to write their name in a, you know, for example, in the map, I asked them to introduce themselves. So obviously that required them um, writing their name. Okay. So I'm sorry that I, I couldn't show you how to do that. The anonymous on, on my account, it just, it looks a little different. Um, okay. So the third example is actually, you will not be participating in that. It will just be for your viewing pleasure. And this is, this is an actual, the other two that I showed you are just examples that I created just for our purpose. But this is an actual example that I'm using this week with students uh, for, for our online, online class. And the way I shared this, this link is I embedded this Padlet onto my website. And let me show you. Uh, you can, you can, uh, don't share it yet, please, Anthony. I would like to show them the embedded view. What embedded means is that it is, instead of a, instead of a link, instead of a hyperlink like these, it is actually part of your website. So if a student clicks on, uh, the student can actually just create a post directly from your website. There wouldn't be a need for students to visit, uh, and go to another tab and work on it. So on my website, I can do it directly from, from here. Okay, Anthony, you can go ahead and share that link, please. And again, this is just for your viewing pleasure, all right? Please don't make any edits to this. And what this is, is I asked them to review a TED Talk. In the description, in the description, I asked them a series of questions and I want them to, to reply. As you can see, students were asked, whoa, students were asked to put the, include their name and answer a series of questions, as well as provide links. So when a student wants to create a new post, they would add a link, okay? They can okay. add it, yes. I'm sorry, um, we, on, we see your slide number one. Is it oh, possible duh, to oh my God, duh, sorry. I forgot to resume share. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Monica. <laughs> Thank you, got carried away. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. Oh my goodness, I've been talking this whole time. I'm so sorry. Okay, so let me go back. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, embedding it into your website. I'm so sorry. Okay, so here you go. Here is my website. Here is my website. <laughs> and there you go. So the Padlet, the actual Padlet, is part of my website. So instead of a student having to go to a different tab or a different window, uh, they can add their post directly from my website. Um, so once again, here I embedded, I embedded the Padlet into my website. If you're into that fancy, um, that fancy technology uh, and you have your own website, I'm not sure how to embed it, if it would be possible to embed in a different learning management system. I've never worked on that, but you could definitely explore that possibility. Um, all right, so for something like this, it's much more accessible, again, because the student is just on my website. They do not have to go to a different page. Uh, so I'm so sorry, let me, let me go back. Oh, Amy Cuddy, I'm going to delete your post. Okay, all right, so once again, students here were asked to review a TED Talk, and as you can see, some students have already posted. And I recommend that when it is something a little more involved, that you provide them with an example, okay? Just because it's lengthier, it's very different than providing 
a one word response like chocolate or vanilla. So I posted, I made the first post and I answered the questions as I would like them answered from their own. Um, and so now there is a wealth of TED Talks that they can choose from. Uh, now, obviously there are a million TED Talks on the website, but these are six to 12 minute TED Talks. And next week, actually for homework, I'm going to ask them to, to watch a TED Talk that their peers suggested, and then they will, next week, they don't know this yet, uh, they will add a comment to their, they will watch somebody else's TED Talk, and they will add, and they will add a comment. So that's another way of extending it. We keep this Padlet open, and students could come on here, and it's a, it could be a, a library, a mini library of TED Talks. All right, are we okay? Monica? Yes. So let me, I'm not sure if you're gonna, you could answer these questions right away, but I just wanna give you a couple of questions that come in, that have come into the Q&A. So one question has to do with the posts. So I think it's a question about how maybe, um, sorry, how you can add the media to your post, either yeah. if you want to put a photo into your post or perhaps a YouTube video into your post how you yes. can do that. And okay. then the other question has to do with um, embedding on, like you were telling us about, you could embed the Padlet on the website. Yes, I will show you that uh, after we get through with the examples. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Yes, so let me go ahead and show you the post again. So for any Padlet that you, that you create, uh, once you begin to create your post, uh, you will see you will see these options. Uh, you will see these options right here, and I can upload, and I can pick a file. Let's see from. Uh, it tells me that I can pick a file from my computer and drag it, uh, or I can. It will open. It will open up the uh, a window for me to select my file. I can include a link, right? I can include a link, so uh, just, just for fun, something I can think of right now, msn.com, uh, there you go. Um, again, you can edit it, whoa, sorry. Let me just start again, okay. So that was a link, that was a link, and uh, I can add images or videos or uh, some other kind of media to my, to my post. So what they were asked to do here was to create a link. Now if you go, if you are on the TED Talk website, there's always a share arrow, and students are able to get the link that way. Um, let me know if I should elaborate more. And here you go. Oh, I can't. Uh, if you wanted, if a student wanted to add a picture, what is this for? Here you go. So this is just the full menu. It is a full menu of all the things that a student can include in their post. All right. I recommend that you start off slow. That you start off slow. This is the first time that I ask them to to add something to their post besides their own words uh, because it. That might be uh, a next step or just a, an ability that they might have to develop with time. Um, just are asking me. Uh, okay, so I hope that answers your question. That question, I will get. I will get into how to embed in a little bit. All right. So why should you consider using Padlet? All right. So we we participated in two Padlets, and it took you a very short time, correct? Now that was very simple, basic Padlet, uh, but I engaged you during my presentation. I, I made sure that you were present. Uh, now that we are doing online, online learning, that's another way that you can, uh, that you, you know, if you include it within your live session, 
uh, you could ask them to complete something then and there and verify attendance in that way. Uh, so Padlet offers a variety of walls to engage you, uh, your students in a different way. And what I mean by walls is a different format. If it's a map, if it's the columns, um, if it's just a row, there's also timelines. And I will show you that. I will show you the different formats. Uh, they are pretty easy to create. They offer templates and they, the gallery of Padlets that other people have created are wide and you can choose any of them to copy. Uh, so I have found those useful as well when I cannot create a Padlet then and there. I visited the gallery and just copied some, uh, some other Padlets. Um, again, a Padlet can be incorporated at any part of your lesson. If it's a pre-assessment or if it's during or afterwards, um, you could you could find a way to incorporate it at any part of your lesson. Um, it's really easy to share with students. As you saw today, we shared links with you. So if you're communicating with your students through email or text, or if you have a learning management system, you could post these links or even QR codes, which I'll show you. I'll show you in a bit. Uh, it could be Again, something quick that students could complete during a live session, during a live session, or for homework. Uh, I have done it both ways. Last night, students were, uh, they worked on a map during a live session. And for example, the TED Talk, uh, that's something that they're doing this week for homework. Uh, okay, so now let me show you, all right? so. Uh, some basic information about Padlet is uh, Padlet only lets you create three Padlets. So let me show you something. Let me show you my dashboard. So as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five right now in rotation. I have a premium account, uh, which is $10 a month. Uh, but you, if you have a free account, you will only see three spaces. And so that means that you can only create three, okay? There's a way to get around it, okay? There's a way to get around it. And the way to get around that is to archive. If you archive your Padlets, so that means that you put them away, right? You put them away and they're out of rotation. That means that students cannot uh, create posts. Uh, so they will see a message like this. This Padlet, this Padlet is, is archived, uh, but you can swap them. So for example, if I wanted to ar archive that, and then uh, if I create another one that puts me, I'm sorry, that maxes me out at three, but then I want to use it again, then I can just swap them. I can just swap them and keep them in rotation that way. That's one way to get around the three, uh, the three Padlet minimum. So if a student uh, accesses one of your Padlets that is archived, they will see this message, all right? And they cannot make modifications to it. You can, you can, um, but they will not be able to add posts. All right, so it's ten dollars for premium. I figured if I'm going to be using it a lot this uh, this term, might as well pay ten bucks this month for it. So I I'm enjoying it so far. Okay, it is one forty-two, and I think we have some time to create your own. Uh, I suggest that when you create your own Padlet, like with any technology any tool, instructional tool, uh, determine your purpose. What, what are you using this Padlet for? Is it to get to know your students? Is it to uh, check what they know? Uh, is it to gather, uh, sorry, is it to survey information? Uh, what, what is your purpose? What do you want to accomplish? And then once you determine the purpose, uh, then you have, then you are ready to start creating. 
you select a type, which I will show you, which I will show you in a little bit once I get done with this list. And then you make your modifications. You know, you modify the title um, and the description. In the description, this is the area where you will write your instructions, okay? Uh, if you think you need to, make the first post and have it serve as an example for your students. Uh, then you can change any settings for this Padlet that are available to you, and then you are ready to share. So let me, let me go through this process with you. So if you are signed in and you are at your dashboard, you will make a Padlet. Uh, this is a gallery that I'm referring to that has an infinite amount of Padlets that other wonderful people have created. And you can just, uh, if you click on it, you can make a copy. So this is what other somebody else has already added to this. Um, but sorry. there is an area where you could remake it or make a copy, and then it's yours. Just like quizzes or cahoots, if you have ever used that, um, that also allows you to make copies of somebody else's work. So that's the same thing with Padlet. Uh, so if I make a Padlet, it offers me these formats, these Padlet, uh, I'm sorry, these types. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. So I have uh, eight different types, and I can select whichever type. So I like the map. Let's do another map. All right, now Padlet always comes up with these uh, very fun names and fun descriptions. So you can go ahead and this is where you would make modifications. Uh, and my title will be creative title. And let's see, uh, the instructions could be, I'm sorry, Tell us where you traveled to last year. I don't know. Something, something of, that, of that sort. Uh, you can select an icon. And an icon, that's, that's just if you want to go the extra step. This is what an icon does. Let's see. There you go. So if you see on the top left, it has now created an icon. If, if it helps you uh, to identify it on, on your dashboard, not, it's not anything necessary. It doesn't do anything for your Padlet. Okay, so this is where uh, your unique link will, would be. So again, I could copy it directly onto my clipboard. And if I wanted to, I can do that, right? Or I can hyperlink. And that is how I would hyperlink text or, or pictures. I can do pictures as well. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I can change the style of the map. So this is the one I chose before. So I'll I like that one. I think it's clearer. Um, attribution. This is where, where you will, if you don't care who submits this, uh, if you don't like to see anonymous, uh, then you can just turn this off. Um, but if you want it to display the person's name, um, you can go ahead and toggle this option. Um, again, if they're not signed in, then it would just say anonymous. Um, comments, if you want, if you want to um, make students, I'm sorry, make this option available for students to make comments. I always do because um, I always ask them to to make comments to at least two other people. Um, and then the funny part here is, you know, you can filter profanity, but I hope 
that's not an issue with your students. And uh, if you would like for, for you to, I'm sorry, to approve every single post, then you can toggle that option as well. Uh, reactions, if you would like to have um, the option of having students like a post or love or rate it or grade it, you can do that. Okay, so I, this is, I have now created my Padlet. So now let's share it. I'm going to share it. I am going to share it and I have many different ways. I can get the QR code, copy to clipboard, I can embed, email, etc., etc. All right, so let's talk about embed. So when you embed something, if you are on your website, let me just, okay, I'll just do it here. I'll make modifications on, on my website. Uh, depending on what you are using, I am using Google Sites. Uh, Weebly also has this, I'm sorry, you have this capability, multiple platforms. You will look for an option that says embed, and then you can just copy and paste that. If I want to embed, I will paste the code. I will copy and paste the code that I that I require. So for me, it is this at the top. And I will embed the code. So this is what the students will see on my page. Here you go. There you go. And on Google Sites, I have, I can, uh, and I'm sure on any other platform that you use to make your to make your website, uh, you can have the option of adding text, of adding text next to it, or maybe adding a cap uh, caption. Uh, so now, when students view, when students view your your website, again, they can just directly post. They can directly add a post to your to your padlet. Um, okay, I think I'm I think I'm done. Jubal, are there any other questions that I can respond to or show you? Monica, sorry. So um, just a few questions about the um, embedding but I think maybe just to clarify for some folks. So, so long as you have that embed code that Monica was showing us, you basically can use this in many different LMSs or on a Google site or anything. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a universal thing. Yeah. You just, you wanna grab the Padlet embed code and then find the place in the LMS or on the LMS page or your Google site page where you paste the code and then mm -hmm. just go ahead and paste it. Got it. And you know, if you need, just try it out. If you're if you're not really familiar with this embedding business, just give it a try. Uh, you can always undo something. Uh, I I like Google Sites because it gives you the the ability to embed something through uh, using a URL as well. Because sometimes when when you are trying to embed something, it only you're, you must use the code. And, but sometimes you don't have the code. Uh, so that's an extra step that you would go through to generate the code for your, for your, um, in, able, in order to embed. But you know, maybe that's something that you don't need right now. But again, I recommend that you play around with it. It's, uh, I can, you can always undo it. Uh, for example, right now, I will undo this, and that's, that's it. If you mess up, you can always undo or redo. I recommend to just give it a shot. Okay, anything else, Anthony? Um, Monica, could you take a few minutes again, maybe back in your dashboard? I think people are still a little bit confused about 
when they're signed into their accounts and they're at their dashboard, where can they find some of these things that you're showing us? Like, for example, like where was the place where I, you showed us all the different templates that we could use, that we could choose from? And then once we're in a Padlet, um, can you show us again where some of those commands were in terms of like where the embed code is and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so once again, I'm on my dashboard, okay? Um, and please, again, Padlet always makes these uh, fun suggestions. So remember to eat your veggies. Uh, and so I'm here on my dashboard. And what I'm seeing right now is are some of the Padlets that I have created. I have options on the top and I have options on the left. Uh, so I am going to make a Padlet. Once I, once I select that, make a Padlet, it will offer me the eight different types, eight different formats of Padlets that they offer, okay? So right now you are, you can only create these different, these eight different kinds of, of Padlets. Um, but you can do whatever you want with them. So let's go to- uh, Monica? Yeah. Sorry, so again, just so it's clear for people. So some people are asking, how do I make the map that we didn't, can you go back to the choices again? Yeah, I'm just, I just wanna show them again. The, okay. Okay, yeah. make a Padlet. Mm -hmm. So the map choice was your first Padlet, right? Mm -hmm. And then you also mentioned the shelf Padlet, which is that yeah. one in the lower left corner, which was Correct. I think the second one. Mm -hmm. And then what was the third one? Was that the stream one, the TED Talk? Yeah, I did a, yeah, you're right. I did stream. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So yes. just so just so people understand, you know, this, you have a lot of different choices here and Monica showed us three different choices, map, shelf, and stream. Yeah, Anthony. And I think one thing that, that they should know too is that, you know, if you choose a map, uh, what matters is, Again, your purpose. What do you want to know? What do you practice? Is it grammar? Is it learning about them? Uh, because I can use a map a variety of different ways. Um, you know, I can, I've, I asked you to tell me about your favorite food, but if I want you, you know, if I'm talking, if I'm asked, if I want to know about, I don't know, current events, you know, I can ask them to, I, label create a post regarding a current event that they read about you know where is it happening so just because you're limited to these formats uh, you you can create whatever you want you just it just depends on the questions that you ask them so let's go back to the map so i will select the map i will select and then it just generates it for you and when you when you are here then you are, here is, uh, when you open this, it automatically has this menu open for you, which is modify. If you accidentally close it, uh, you can just uh, reopen it right here. Is it here? Yes. Okay, in the gear wheel for settings, it will open back up. And here's where you can tweak your title, your description, the, the sharing component of it, embedding the link, that's in a different area. So this is only to modify your, what you want students to see, okay? What did I do? Okay, so now uh, the way I share my Padlet is up on the top right, you have the little right of the arrow, uh, says share and these are the variety of different ways that you can share. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ways to uh, to share your Padlet. I hope that answers your question. Um, and Monica, so uh, people have a couple of different related questions. So um, people are wondering about um, how Padlet looks on mobile devices. So you're, you're working on a computer at the moment, but what if your students only have mobile devices, phones or tablets or something like that? Got it. So uh, I think this is why Google Sites is fantastic, embedding it, in, embedding it into a Google site. Uh, 
because Google Site offers you, uh, you, know, you can see how you can preview how students are going to see it. So if I select phone, I can have an idea about how it's going to look on their phone. Now, Anthony, I've embedded it onto my website. And if you remember, students can make, can create a post directly from here. So they don't need to see the whole thing. Uh, just directly create a post from there. Now, on their phones, that's a great question because just uh, if, if I follow the direct link from my phone, I've actually never, never seen it. Uh, but, uh, for example, something like the shelf or the stream, I imagine, let me go ahead and try it right now. Uh, if anybody, if anybody has already seen it and can give me feedback, um, you can tell us how it looks like and if it's, if, if it's a, if it's not a good way for students to view it on their phone. And Monica, kind of along those lines, um, some, we have a few questions that have come in. So I'm a teacher, I don't have a Google site, I don't have a website, I don't have an LMS, I don't have anything. But you could still, um, and you were showing us the, the way to share. I mean, if you just texted the link to your students, or maybe mm -hmm. if you're using Remind, for example, a texting mm -hmm. app, yeah. you could plop that link right in the app, in yeah. the Remind or, the, or text, and text it out to your students. All your students have to do is click on the link. Remember, they don't need accounts. They just click on the link to open the Padlet on their phones, and then they can participate that way as well. Correct. And uh, what, you know, I, I have Remind, so I just type in the, the bit.ly the bit URL. And that's why I also use, use bit.ly, because sometimes I, just, I have to send it through, through text. Uh, so it's, easy, it's easier that way. And you know, in the past, when in the past when we had face-to-face -face classes, I would always just create a, a Bitly, and I would just project it, and that's how students would access would access my Padlets. So it doesn't matter if you have uh, if you do not have an LMS or Google Sites. You know, you could hyperlink text on your email, like if you're sending them an email, you can create a hyperlink in your email, or you could just copy and paste that link, that link that um, that Padlet gives you, you can just go ahead and, and paste it on here. Uh, so that's, I think it's pr a pretty easy way to share. It's just a matter of finding what works best for how you communicate with your students. I hope that answers your question. And Monica, there was a, um, also a, um, a comment in the chat that you can also customize your Padlet, right? You can, you can customize the very end of your Padlet to a, a word or a phrase or something like that, right? Say that again, a word or a phrase? A word or, so your Padlet. So, for uh -huh. example, like you're showing us padlet.com slash oh. Espinosa underscore Monica slash mm -hmm. that Correct. part, you could also customize that as well. So you could turn, yeah. you know, you, you could change it to world map or something like that. Correct. So, for example, yeah, you're, you're completely right. So, so may, you know, but I would have to do that within Padlet. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be this super duper long and confusing link. You know, it you could definitely shorten it and customize it, which is, which is great because it might be more relevant for your students and maybe easier to access. I gave, I created, I customized a URL for you, which was, you know, bit.ly forward slash teacher students, which is definitely easier than UC for UTC. Um, okay. I hope that answers that question. Anything else? I believe so. And I think there's just a little bit of confusion about the Bitly. So Bitly is something different mm -hmm. than Padlet. So any yeah. kind of a any kind of a long convoluted URL or address, if you want to mm -hmm. make it much simpler, 
you can use Bitly or another shortener to to um, to create a to create an easier URL to remember. So that you showed us, for example, exactly. Monica, the Bitly dot uh, Bitly slash teacher students, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Now imagine. So this one is for teacher students. This one was for the shelf. Yeah. This one was for the shelf, right? So instead of instead of having oh sorry instead of giving you giving you this right instead of giving you that really long long uh link i shortened it to something that's a little easier for for you to spell and type into your phone or your your browser but again students must type it in exactly as it is and yes the bit.ly is something different but is also a free account and i use it a lot because i share lots and lots of links with my students i share links to google docs to slides to padlets to quizlet uh, to uh, Google Sites, to you name it. I share lots of links with them. So I create lots and lots of bit.ly's. They are, it is free um, and super easy to use because they are customizable. Uh, customizable? I don't know if that's, <laughs> and it's, it's much easier than giving them a really long link. Monica, one more question. So um, a couple of people really want to um, understand better. Um, so if they have a YouTube video, right, how can they, how can the teacher add the YouTube video into the Padlet, maybe I guess into a Padlet post, right, the teacher post so that then this, when the students are looking at the Padlet, they could click on the video that you've added to the Padlet in your post. Okay. So for example, making the video the center of the post is what I imagine they're trying to do. Yeah, I know that I've, I, I, I don't um, remember the steps, but I, sometimes what I have, I have a post that I start off with that I want my students to look at first. So maybe I have mm -hmm, like some instructions mm -hmm. or whatever, like yeah. da, 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 and watch this video. Mm -hmm. And then right under that is the YouTube video that I want the students to watch in the Padlet. Got it. So yes, so when you, when you create your, your Padlet, uh, let me go back to TED Talk. So I, I created this example. So you will have the option to, uh, uh, oh sorry, to set it as a cover. And that means that everyone will see it. This will be, uh, it, um, in this post, because what you're doing is you're essentially creating a post when you post your YouTube video, right? And as part of your post, that is where you would give your instructions or your uh, description of what you want your students to do. And then your students could just create, create their post around that video that you watch. So uh, you would just do something like this. I hope that answers that question. Anything else? Um, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, there was a question a while back. Um, and you kind of talked about this a little bit, but maybe you can mention this again. So, okay, so you, you imagine you're a teacher and you're wanting to get started with your students using Padlet, and maybe they don't have any experience using Padlet. So again, can you tell us about some of your steps for teaching students how to use Padlet, and also given the distance learning environment? So how, mm -hmm. about, how might you go about teaching your students how to get started with Padlet? Okay, so uh, I, when I started doing this online, <clears throat> in one of our live sessions, I walked them through the steps. So I had a slide which explained the assignment and it had, it had the, the Bitly address 
and uh, which was also hyperlinked because this present that presentation was shared with them. And I took screenshots. I'm sorry, I took uh, snippets of what of the steps, kind of like Melinda showed you at the beginning, and she gave you that that little tutorial. So that's what it was like. That's how I that's how I did it. And let me show you. That was during a live session, okay? And during that live session, uh, everybody did uh, completed their first Padlet with me. Uh, in case anyone didn't, I'm sorry. In case someone didn't know how to how to get to it, uh, sorry. I'm trying to look at where my script, my pictures are. Okay. No, they are part of my presentation. So that's that's the that's the first way that I that I did that, which was talking about it during my presentation and walking them through as we were in a live session. Um, then I, you know, that session is recorded and they have the presentation. They have a little. Uh, uh, the snippet the like screenshot pictures of step one step step two step three so that's how i shared it with my students when in this online setting and it seems to have worked so far okay yeah i think that that's uh it's very helpful um snippet mm -hmm. so and monica when you talk about snippets basically um, I mean, depending if you're in a Windows device, there's that snipping tool that you could use. Yeah. If you're on a Mac, mm -hmm. I always just use screen. I make a screenshot, but I can yeah. I can customize the screenshot mm -hmm. to the dimensions of what I want um, to you know to want it to be. So I don't want to show the, the entire screen. I just want to yeah. do a screenshot of like, okay, here are the commands that you would you know here's where the plus sign is and blah 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 all that. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Um, let me just see if uh, there are other questions. If uh, folks, if you do have any more questions, go ahead and type them in the Q and A. I think we are kind of coming up to the. Oh, well, we're actually over time. Mm -hmm. um, we were scheduled till two, and we appreciate Monica staying a little bit later to um, help us out here. Um, Melinda also said we have um, we do have an office hour today. O ten office hour at four o'clock. So if you go home and, well, you're already, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> most of us are already home, but yeah. A, yeah. Anyway, if you're, you know, in front of your computer practicing a little bit and you're still having trouble, come and see us at four and um, we can, we can do some troubleshooting at that time as well. Yes. And my contact information is also, is also on this presentation. Uh, so you can ask me as well, if you'd like to contact me. Yes. And, and so, sorry. Go ahead, Monica. Okay. Um, and if you would like to join, well, you know, some of you already are, but if you plug in this referral, you get an extra Padlet. So you would get four instead of three. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Padlet.com. Let me see if we can type that in quick here. So it's padlet.com slash referrals slash S E no with a Z underscore Monica. Mm -hmm. Okay. So folks, I just typed it into the chat. Monica, I didn't realize that, that you could do that. That's great. So if you want to grab a fourth, either. yeah, fourth Padlet. Um, go ahead and click on this link, padlet.com slash referrals slash Espinosa underscore Monica. And you can get your fourth Padlet. Oh, For fantastic. For free. Who knew? I know, right? So Who I hadn't knew? seen that. I just learned that uh, recently. So that's nice. nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, Monica, would you mind um, uh, letting or unsharing your screen? And I just, I know that people have had questions about um, recordings and slides and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to show folks um, where that is on the OTAN website. Yes. Oh, and, oh actually. Uh, yeah. So hang on one second. Uh, for this presentation, 
if you all would like to would like to view it, I very quickly created a bit.ly for all of you. So that took me less than a minute. Okay, so there you go. This is the bit.ly to uh, to this presentation if if you'd like to see it. So what would you you said stop sharing? Well, let me type this. I think I got it. Pilot presentation one. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I'm not sharing. Huh? Ah, ha, ha. Okay. That's sorry okay. That. That's okay. I think I just got it in the chat. So, mm -hmm. um, but we will also post the slides for Monica, and in a second, we'll show you where those are. So, Monica, why don't you go ahead and unshare, unshare? or stop okay. sharing? Sorry. And I'll okay. go ahead and share my screen. Mm -hmm. And people can, I'm going to, I think it opens up into my email. <laughs> uh -oh. but don't worry, nothing important there. Um, okay, so if you go to the OTAN website, okay, so the OTAN website is www, well, actually, you don't even need that part. You can just go to OTAN.us. So when you come to the OTAN website, um, we have our news item here on the homepage, which is a list of upcoming uh, webinars, office hours, um, anything else that's coming up during the week, we have posted here on the homepage. So as I mentioned, we do have that office hour a little bit later today at four o'clock. You can come and visit us there. Uh, we do have a couple of more webinars coming up tomorrow and Friday. Um, tomorrow, Thursday, we actually have another CASAS webinar. Um, CASAS will present recording distance learning in TOPS Pro Enterprise. So if you would like to attend that webinar, you can go ahead and click the, on the link and register for that webinar. Friday, we have a webinar on Google Classroom with our own Melinda Holt and Debbie Jensen. I think Debbie actually was in the room today. I saw her. Um, they're gonna present on Google, Google Classroom for Adult Education, part one. So part one will be Friday morning, 10 a.m. And then part two will be Monday morning at 10 a.m. So if you'd like to join uh, those webinars on Google Classroom, you can go ahead and register there as well. Again, you're gonna to go to the OTAN uh, website, OTAN.us to get started. When you're back up near the top of the page, make sure to click on this button on the right-hand side, COVID-19 field support. On the OTAN website, we are trying to consolidate a number of resources that are coming in um, from many corners. But one of the things that we're also doing on this page is uh, providing links to recordings and uh, related resources for the webinars that we've been running now for the last couple of weeks. So um, Monica already shared her slides uh, with us. So we'll try to get those slides up as soon as we can. Um, but if they're gonna be, uh, yeah, we have a lot of things going on at the moment. So um, eventually we'll have an entry for Monica um, the, on her pilot presentation today so we can add the slides there. When the recording is available, we'll go ahead and uplink that, upload that link to the recording. But you can also, if you missed any webinars in the past or you want to rewatch something or grab the slides or the other resources, they are all listed here on our COVID-19 field support page. And again, just start at the OTAN website, OTAN.us, and look for this COVID-19 field support button on the right-hand side. 